Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite YouTuber who has run out of mean comments to make fun of, Gardner, the Linux gamer. That's a good problem to have. This video would not be possible if it weren't for the support of my 152 amazing patrons. Uh, check it out at patreon.com slash linuxgamer. I want to give a special shout out to one of my top tier singularity members, Mitchell Valentino. Mitchell, my dude, thank you so much for your support. It is truly humbling. If you like this video, hit that like button. It really helps the show out. You can also uh, subscribe to see more from me. Ring that notification bell if you're really into it. Uh, you can also check out the show over on LBRY, beta.lbry.tv slash at the Linux Gamer. I want to give a quick follow-up to the discussion that we had about uh, GNOME and theming uh, and the, the results of Guadec 2019. I reached out to Neil McGovern. He's the executive director of the GNOME Foundation. And uh, I asked him a couple questions about uh, the results of that Guadec meeting. So I asked, number one, before this feature, did GNOME officially support theming? His answer was yes and no and yes again. It all depends on what you mean by theming. GTK supports applications to set custom colors. And as a platform, you can overwrite a Dweda to set your own CSS. This may lead to much brokenness though, as you correctly pointed out. This means that in effect, only a Dweda is actually tested against uh, by app developers. All right, cool, right? So I went on and asked another question. What were the considerations of the core GNOME team that led to this decision? Neil answered, it was actually myself that put together the birds of a feather uh, and moderated slash led the discussion rather than individual core team members. The reason for this fact is that vendors modifying Adweta is happening anyway, and we wanted to create a good experience for users. There has been a disconnect between app developers and distributions for a while, and I wanted the opportunity to get everyone together to start working with each other rather than at cross purpose. There is indeed a mismatch between app authors, vendors, and GNOME in general. Vendors desire to have a visually distinct UI so that when you see, for example, Ubuntu in a terminal, you can say, that's Ubuntu. GNOME has the same desire so that you can say, that's GNOME. Uh, these two are tricky to balance. App authors don't want to target more than one theme for testing purposes, and themes aren't bad per se, but badly implemented themes are, and it's hard to get right. Okay, fair enough. I asked, do we have details on how downstream branding will be implemented or how it will work? He said, for the moment, we identified three main areas. Simple things that could be implemented by GNOME, upstream elements, things that vendors do that we could start to support, and here be dragons. Uh, mess about with these areas and who knows what will break. We're currently working on the first bit to get a standard palette that people can use in apps and that vendors can override with some degree of confidence that it'll work okay. As part of this, we're hoping to introduce further guidance on the required contrast between these colors. This is important for users who require a high contrast theme, quote unquote, for accessibility reasons, for example. And then I asked a bonus question. Is it supposed to be pronounced GNOME, silent G, or GNOME? Officially, he says, Gnome or Gnome. Unofficially, it doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> so for everyone out there who's given me crap, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to say it Gnome because G is GNU. Duh. Thank you so much to Neil for answering my questions. Uh, if you guys have a question you want me to ask him, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to ask. All right, today we're talking about GNOME, the latest release of GNOME 3.34. Now, GNOME is awesome. Uh, if you don't know, GNOME is my favorite desktop environment. It's really the only one that I find usable. Everything else is just unusable to me. Uh, GNOME out of the box perfectly fits my workflow. All of my needs are met with GNOME, and that's one of the reasons that I love it, and I use it on just about every computer that I have. Um, the, the latest release of GNOME has a bunch of really cool features that I wanted to go over and talk about with you guys. Now, if you're on Manjaro or another Arch-based distribution, uh, you're going to end up getting uh, GNOME 3.34 in a release pretty soon. Uh, it doesn't take very long for the distro to package up the uh, the DE and ship it out to, to end users. Now, if you're using something more like Ubuntu, then you're going to be waiting until October 18th in order to get the, the latest version of GNOME. So I wanted to go over some of the awesome new uh, features of GNOME. Uh, 
So the first thing I want to mention is GNOME Games. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, GNOME Games is a front end for LibRetro that lets you play emulators uh, and, and other games like Steam games on your system. It's really cool. It's a GTK uh, application that uh, works as a front end, and I truly adore this app. Uh, it does have some limitations, but they're working on it. And that's one of the things that is uh, released now with 3.34 is uh, GNOME Games now supports multiple save states. Uh, that's really cool, and it's all configurable with a with a single uh, tap of a button. So that's really awesome. I am uh, super stoked to get my hands on GNOME Games and try this out. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is GNOME Music. There's a, a bunch of new features in GNOME Music, as well as a few uh, core feature rewrites. The first thing that they've added is uh, the ability to play back music uh, gapless. So, you know, if you have two MP3s, you hit the play button and it gets to the end of the one MP3 and goes on to the next one. There's, there's no gap in between. Another feature that I've been waiting for with GNOME Music is the ability to have music watch a folder for changes. Um, this is now added. This is now a feature that's available in GNOME Music 3.34. Another another big change is the uh, a couple of the panels in GNOME settings. First of all, Nightlight, which is a super awesome uh, feature to have in a desktop environment. Why don't more DE? have this by default. Uh, it's now its own uh, tab in GNOME settings. So being able to, to toggle that, you don't have to go down and drill into a couple different menus in order to get to the, uh, to the, uh, to the blue light filter. The Wi-Fi tab has been revamped and now has better spacing, and it will now show uh, an icon indicating whether it's uh, connecting or not. You can also reorder the GNOME Shell search providers. So when you go to type in a search, uh, you can actually see what the results that are most relevant to you uh, by going into the GNOME settings and changing this around. It's pretty awesome. Next up, there are a bunch of new icons that have been added uh, to the already superb GNOME icon pack. Uh, the GNOME Icon Pack, I fell in love with as soon as I saw it, not only because it was a tremendous, almost several orders of magnitude improvement over the previous Icon Pack that they had, which I thought was just terrible, uh, but this new, these new icons look fantastic. I really like these. Uh, a couple of the uh, new icons that they have are for uh, to-do, uh, photos, videos, and uh, simple scan. Um, now, I... <laughs> Of these apps, the only one that I actually use is video. But the fact that these icons look so pretty and they'll look pretty next to all the other icons that I have in my uh, in my activities panel, I like that. So GNOME Web has been updated to allow pinning of tabs, which is something that uh, I do quite often on uh, on Firefox. And I really like GNOME Web, but there are a few uh, small issues with it. Uh, mostly that uh, some websites just do not support it. Also, it doesn't have uh, support for um, uh, WebRTC, which is something that I use on a regular basis. Another thing that they've added with uh, GNOME Web is sandboxing, or better sandboxing. Uh, but one thing that I'm really hoping for is that uh, the GNOME Web will actually sandbox applications. Like if you have like a progressive web app that you install, like, let's say on your Librem 5, for example, and uh, you install this app, I would like to have the app be sandboxed completely from the web browser. So if you're logged in with a session on, let's say, Instagram as a progressive web app, and you open up Instagram inside the browser, it should not maintain your session data. That's my opinion. Uh, I think that that would be super, super useful and very, uh, very good for privacy because you'd be able to have your app installed on, you, you know, your progressive web app installed and be logged into it. But also when you go back into your normal browser, Instagram's not gonna be logged in uh, and other websites won't be able to see that uh, session data. That's something I would really like to see from Epiphany. So I host a podcast with my friend Raven, uh, Raven67854. If you haven't listened to it, there's a there's a link up here in the in the corner. Um, it's it's really funny because uh, Raven has always been kind of a uh, a curmudgeon, and he he hasn't really liked uh, most of Gnome's releases. But this last release and these last couple topics I'm talking about here, uh, Raven was actually really impressed with, and he he's actually been talking about uh, Gnome more favorably recently. Uh, but as far as what I actually think about it, you know, honestly, I'm a little impressed. Yeah. I am a little impressed, and everyone who listens to this podcast knows how I feel about Gnome. Raven impressed by a Gnome release? <laughs> I know, right? It should be like the front headline, you know. <laughs> that's um, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the headline, yeah. <laughs> 
So uh, this, this thing, it's a quality of life thing. This is a quality of life thing. The settings panel for the background, uh, you would think that that would be kind of a trivial thing, but they've just uh, added a bunch of new features here. The, the biggest one being that uh, you can actually preview what your uh, background is going to look like. It, it temporarily applies the, the background that you select in the panel uh, before it actually applies it. So you can actually see what it's going to look like. Braven was super stoked about that. <laughs> in the applications overview, you can now actually create um, folders for your applications. So you can actually sort them now, which is something you couldn't do very easily before. You would have to use something like a .desktop editor to actually be able to organize things into different folders. And now you can just do it on the fly uh, in GNOME. I think that that's super awesome. Uh, I'm definitely gonna use this, especially on the Librem 5. Hopefully that is a feature that comes over to the Librem 5. Uh, and uh, the final thing that I wanted to talk about is better performance. Uh, the GNOME has taken it very seriously in the last couple of releases to, to increase performance, to make applications more responsive, to make animations more fluid, to just make the desktop environment feel better and just work better and use fewer resources. And, and you know what? They really hit the mark this time. And you know what? I'm super stoked that, that performance has become a huge priority for, uh, for their team. Um, Canonical's Daniel Van Gutt has actually been submitting a bunch of patches to GNOME to increase performance and uh, to optimize things and make things feel more fluid and fresh. And, and I truly, truly love that. So I wanted to say congrats to the GNOME team because this is yet another excellent release. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, definitely give uh, GNOME 3.34 a spin on your PC today. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. But before we get to the end card, I wanna know what you guys think. What do you think about GNOME 3.34? Have you tried it out? Let me know in the comments. Uh, you can also send me an email, gardener at heavyelement.io. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution on Patreon. If you don't know, I just went full time a few months ago uh, doing my YouTube channel. And uh, if it weren't for my patrons, this would not be possible. And you wouldn't be getting as much Linux content as you get right now. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.